Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're tuning in, thanks for watching. Uh, mostly, I'm just shooting this video to kind of document for myself, but if you uh, are interested and want to stick around, maybe learn something, uh, by all means, totally take advantage of it. This is my tank. It's been running for about a year now. Um, year July 4th, and here it is July 21st or 22nd. 2020. So the tank's been up for a year. I'll take a look at the corals, kind of document um, growth and things like that. And I've found that YouTube's a great place to do that because, um, you know, you can store it there and then later on down the road look back and just kind of compare how the tank's looking. Um, as far as the tank, we have a 10 gallon tank. I believe it's a marine land tank and it's a half circle. I've done a lot of different things to it. I took some pond spray foam and some egg crate and um, I actually sprayed the back of it. So this whole back is pond foam and I let that cure for a real long time. And then I made a little kind of a spot where the pond foam came out as well as the egg crate. I'd be able to, be, to, be able to see this better up here. Uh, brightness wise, it's kind of hard to see. Um, but the egg crate came out and I just spray foamed that and I made it so that all the heaters and the hang on back filter inlet, or yeah, the part where the water goes up, hang on back filter, um, all that stuff is covered back in there. And then I went to our local uh, aquarium store, or LFS, and I got some of this like, almost like uh, foam, but it's made out of plastic. You can kind of see the start of it there. And they had different sizes as far as the poricity. Poricity is a word there, but um, I've got it, the, the smaller kind of foam it's not really foam, like I said, it's made out of plastic, so the water can go through it. I've got that by the inlet that you can't see in there in the back where the water goes in. That way it wouldn't suck up any like snails or anything. And I haven't really had any problems with that because I was worried a little bit about it maybe clogging up or something, but it's been up over a year. I think I've really pulled that out of there once. I've been dosing Vibrant. Uh, I do one milliliter per week. And I do that right after a water change. That's really helped with the algae control. Um, it's done a really nice job. Take a look at the corals. This is our first coral that we put in. It's a frog spawn. We put that in pretty much right after the uh, tank got cycled. You know, a month or two after the tank uh, was cycled. So, I don't know, maybe August, September of last year. And it's been doing well. I remember at first I didn't have a light. and I, The light, I was trying to do some DIY lights that failed miserably um, with some, just some LED light bulbs. It didn't do so well. I ended up replacing it with a AI Prime HD. But I remember I had to, to keep this thing alive, I actually had to put the light bulb in these side lamps and put the light bulb right up to the glass with those LED light bulbs. And actually, I took it out of there. These are what it, what it used to be. Um, and that's hard to see right there, but these were just standard light bulbs. Let's see if I can get a little light on there. Maybe. Yeah, just standard light bulbs. So I actually had to, for a while until my light came in, these were these LEDs. Now I just have them on the side for just kind of a theme light. They change colors. I had them on blue and I had this light bulb right up to the tank to keep this thing alive for a couple months. And it actually worked. And that was until I had saved up enough money to get the AI Prime HD. And then once I put that on, everything you know, started doing well. Or this, it didn't need this anymore. I actually did the same thing for the Akins. I had these light bulbs. I got another one over here in this other lamp. Um, that are kind of to the side of the aquarium. But um, I had them right up to the glass. 
for the longest time until uh, I did eventually get an overhead light to replace those. That did not work. So don't do that. Um, this probably I would recommend getting that regular light to start with. Getting back to the corals, this is the frog spawn. And then this is a hammer. Uh, it's kind of got a blue, bluish tips with the green base. I like it, it's pretty. Um, and I like how, for me, everything is kind of like on this side. We have all the euphilia um, just kind of going up the side of the tank and um, all the way up here to the top. And from a little bit further view, kind of just wrapping around. Um, a couple clownfish. I believe they're storm or frost. Not really sure. Can't remember. And tail spot plenty is back there too. I'll throw some pictures in this just to kind of help it see it better. Moving down here, um, some Akins. It's kind of a reddish blue one. And then over here, it's kind of red, white, and blue. I just picked this up recently, making kind of like an Aiken rock on the back here, kind of a blue and yellow, or blue and greenish, blue and gold. And there's one back there, I don't know if you can see it. It was like more green or more gold and blue. Of course, we have a candy cane coral right there. I actually dropped it the other day trying to remove a vermitted snail. I removed that, but I did it over the sink, and when I did that, I was using a screwdriver to get the vermitted snail off, and it actually came off the plug and almost went down the garbage disposal. I mean, I snatched it up, and it was half down the garbage disposal. It's kind of on the end there. That's the part that had the most damage, that one right there. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, right there, that one. You can kind of see it's not doing as well as the other sides. But Orange Recordia. Now, I haven't really had a lot of success with this one. Um, I believe it's the Florida um, version. And I read that those do the best. But mine's really just stayed pretty small. I've moved it around. I had it up here for a while. I moved it back there. And it's just kind of staying the same size. I don't really feed the aquarium too much for as far as the corals. Every now and then I'll feed some reefroids. If any of you that are watching have any tips on that, you know, let me know maybe what you think I could maybe do to get that to grow bigger. I don't like to feed too much just because of what the nutrients spikes. I'm doing okay right now. I actually fed some reefroids last night. I tested my phosphates earlier today. And I was at 0 .006, yeah, 0 0.06, sorry. Um, and then my alkalinity has been staying pretty, pretty stable around 8.7, 8.8. I do have a little bit of a dose uh, thing going on. I dose um, all for reef. And a lot of people are talking about how theirs is clogging their lines. But I tied it in with my, um, with my actual auto top off and I'll show you that here in a second um, actually I'll go ahead and show you it to you now and it'll probably be kind of hard to see in here without a light let's see back in there I got the light on anyway I have a dosing uh, set up in here this is just the bottom of our cabinet and that's the all for reef and I made it out of like a I kind of made this um, Let's pull this out here. I made it out of a kind of like a mason jar, and then they sold these lids. Um, essentially, I at Walmart they had these lids, so I just kind of those plastic lids, and I cut a little hole in there, and got some. Uh, this is airline tubing, really, and I haven't had any issues with it. I know a lot of people say this stuff is clogged up their lines, 
Now there on here on the bottom is not airline tubing. I got that uh, from BRS, Bulk Reef Supply. That was more of a rigid tubing. And I took it up here to the top where I then actually put it into an airline tubing connector. And then I went from the airline tubing connector to another connector here. Again, this is a BRS connector as well. Um, using uh, some, I don't know, they had this in there. I don't remember exactly what it was. Uh, but just connection for like, I think it's quarter inch. Uh, don't don't know that for sure. Just research it real, if you are going to do something like this. Over here, this is airline tubing um, uh, check valve, and so this just actually lets air in this way. And I just kind of glued it down, so that way when the water is pumping out, the air can actually get in, but the air won't get out, so that the, this won't evaporate. And then I have that going into our. Our doser in there and then the doser goes up the back of the tank I'll show you that um, over here in the back and then also have a DIY float switch that is controlling the auto top off and the auto top off water is right in this drawer I had some just a I went down to a plastic shop and they made me a custom fit uh, PVC type of box that just fit that can, that drawer perfectly. I ran all that behind the uh, the tank. The, the um, all for reef dose as well as the um, auto top off. I actually ran it in the back here and I had the lines come together. And so I have it set up so that the, kind of see right there. I have it set up so that the all for reef doses first, and then my auto top off comes on two times uh, per day with the RODI water, and it cleans that line out. Let me turn the uh, light back off. So it, it will, when it, the top off water comes through that line, it cleans the end of the line out and I put some check valves on there so that way um, you know that, that it wouldn't have a siphon going back. I've got a check valve down there and in the drawer as well as up here and I made like this is like a heater or regulator I'm not sure the technical term essentially it's something that you, it's a heater controller um, you plug your heater into that, and then that actually has a probe that goes into the tank that monitors the temperature. And it goes, I've got the probe back in here, you can't really see it. Um, but it monitors the temperature, and the heater plugs into that unit. And I have it set to not go over 80. Right now it's at 77.4, that's the top number. But if it was to go over 80, it would automatically shut it off just to kind of have a little extra protection there. Uh, here's a new core I just recently picked up too. It's called a lithophyllin, I believe, and it's a CC mine meld. I think it's a real pretty orange color and I like how it contrasts my wine bottle that I stuck in the tank. And I actually put this wine bottle in there to, um, well, it was kind of a representation um, something I did for our family. It's got some coralline algae that eventually I'll scrape off so you can actually see it, but you can kind of see it there. I had some lettering put on that um, in, engraved or etched. I think they called it etched. And I had uh, some, you know, a letter for our last name. And I had some different dates that you can't see on there right now. I'll eventually scrape that off. I'm just kind of letting the corals that are actually growing on the bottle um, I'm letting them grow a little bit better before I take it out there and scrape some of that stuff off around the lettering. And it really, I don't, it, I've done it once, but it won't, and it won't be that big of a deal um, to do. Just right now, I, those corals have not been on there very long. And so I just don't, I want them to really get good and attached before I pull that out of there. I had to glue them down, but I want them to just kind of, kind of grow around. And those are soft corals. I actually got soft corals on there. Those are called blue sympodium. I mean, they're real pretty blue and they have some green on them. 
at first I had thought about putting some Favia on it, and I did actually, and it was really cool looking, but then I started thinking if I ever wanted to get the Favia off without being an LPS and having some stony, um, that's some way, you know, stony coral, I thought I might break the bottle. So these blue Sympodium were a soft coral. I just thought it might eventually be easier to remove. And then on top, we have a GSP green star polyp, and I actually uh, carved out some marine pure. There's some marine pure rock. All this, actually all my rock is marine pure rock. It's been doing really well. It's growing corals and stuff on it. Um, most, most people would never know if they came by and looked at it. They would just think it's regular rock, but it's all marine pure. And I did that because you can carve on it. And uh, I worked with some folks at Marine Pure to do that. And they, they were really nice to me, very good company. I highly recommend them. Um, and they, it's also been helping my nitrates, I've found. Uh, at least my nitrates have been staying pretty low. I think that has a lot to do with the Marine Pure. I've got some here. I've got it, all the rocks are Marine Pure. Even this here is Marine Pure. I can carve it, I like that because I can carve it to fit the areas I want it to do. I may eventually put another one right in here on the sand bed. Again, you're getting more beneficial bacteria um, help, and then you can kind of make it whatever shape you want, real easy to carve on. But um, I made this here, this, this marine pure rock here, just to go on the top of the wine bottle. And, um, it's been doing well. I'm making sure to keep it off of the glass part of the wine bottle. And being that these are soft corals, this uh, GSP as well as the Blue Sympodium, I think it'll be a lot easier when it comes to time to actually start getting it off the glass. It'll be a lot easier for me to do that. Two clownfish. We have a tail spot blending as far as the livestock. We have a hermit crab. And then over here, one of our last corals is this mushroom. And I'm not really sure what color it's gonna be. The initial one I saw was kind of reddish. I almost mis had made a mistake. And the one I saw that was the parent of this one, I almost thought was a, uh, a rock flower anemone. So that's a tank update if you tuned in. Thanks for watching. And it's been doing pretty well. It's been up for about a year now, a little over a year, and that's the year update. If you have any questions or anything, don't hesitate to ask. And I'll see you guys later. All right, bye.